Ice Locked here with Nocturne Gaming, back with more Legends of Eidolon, and today we're taking a look at Divinity. Divinity is a skill that's unlocked at the start of World 5. This is a passive skill that levels up very similar to the way you level up Laboratory. There's four main things you need to pay attention to with Divinity, and that's Divinity Point Gain, Divinity EXP Gain to level it up and unlock new features, how to unlock new gods, and lastly, which gods to use on which characters. To get started with Divinity, you simply need to take a character and hop on an altar. This will open up a new menu and this will allow you to choose a few things. We'll start with the Style tab as this is where you select the type of training that you're doing for Divinity. You'll unlock different methods as you level up Divinity and each of these will have its own benefit. For Kinesis, when you start out, you'll gain one Divinity Point as well as one EXP per hour. And as you get a few levels, you'll unlock Chakra, which will give you a little bit more Divinity and EXP per hour. Keep in mind that these are all base values, so any multipliers you can unlock will directly increase these values. However, it doesn't reflect on this page. Next up, we have the Focus tab, and this is kind of the end of stage one for you. And I recommend sitting on Focus for a little while until you unlock about the first four gods. After that, you really need to focus on leveling up your characters, which is where Mantra comes into place. Mantra gives you one EXP per hour to all characters, which means if you have multiple characters using Mantra, you can really gain a lot of EXP. One catch to this though is some of the EXP multipliers don't actually carry over to all of your characters, so you may notice it's not a, as direct of an increase as it seems. My recommendation at this point is to have between six and eight characters getting onto this mantra, and this will allow you to level up at a decent rate and unlock Vitalik as soon as possible. This doesn't give you any divinity, but the time that you save by having multiple characters giving you a lot more EXP per hour than you can gain by using any of these on individual characters. As our best right now is to have two EXP per hour at base, and with six characters, you're gaining six EXP per hour, which is a significant boost. The start of our next real phase is when we unlock Vitalik. And when you unlock Vitalik on multiple characters, you'll notice a significant increase to your EXP per hour as well, as this is a base value and all of your multipliers will apply correctly. So you will gain even more EXP per hour than if you had eight characters on Mantra. And this will allow you to start generating some divinity points again. The next step after this is unlocking Tranky, and this gives you three XP, EXP per hour even when you're not on the Divinity Altar. This is a must to get to on all of your characters as there are several benefits for having a high level Divinity on all of your characters. So anytime that you're not training Divinity actively, you should have Tranky on as this will allow you to continue leveling up and will eventually unlock Zen for you. Any characters that you have actively training Divinity, you want to be on Zen as soon as possible as this gives you eight Divinity and eight EXP per hour, which is far better than anything else before this. The only thing that's better is the level 80 requirement that gives you, I believe, 10 Divinity and 10 EXP per hour. However, it's not as mandatory to get to this as soon as possible. Next up is the Offerings tab where we have the chance to unlock new gods. To unlock new gods, we need to spend our divinity points on one of two options. These two options always are either 1, 5, or 10% on the left side, or 25, 50, and 100% on the right side. The costs are directly correlating. As you can see, the 1% is 139,000, and 100% is 13.9 million. So each percentage costs the same amount no matter which options you select but it's completely random as I can have a 10% on this and a 25% on this or just completely random options. Every time you select one of the two buttons, you'll spend the amount of points and it will roll two brand new options for you. At this point, I'm trying to save up for the 13 million as I would rather just have the 100% chance. However, I could also take the risk on spending 139,000 and unlock it as well with the 1%. However, that's just probability for you. And the last tab is the info tab, which shows us how much divinity per hour we're generating. It shows us each individual character, the multipliers, and then it does the math for us telling us how much divinity per hour we're generating. 
For the multipliers, there are four different gods that give us multipliers that we can spend different resources on to upgrade. And then there's two sailing artifacts that give us significant boost to our divinity gains as well. But I'll show you the sailing artifacts later in the guide. One last thing to mention is that you can look at your EXP per hour by taking a look at your AFK info, which will show you your total EXP per hour with all of the multipliers that you have active. So currently using the Zen that gives me eight base EXP, I'm gaining 196 per hour. For the next section, I'm going to go over the different gods for the bonuses that they apply, as well as some situations they may be useful for. Starting with the snake god, I can't pronounce that name, but you'll notice that each god has three different bonuses. The linked bonus, which is the primary reason to use the god, the minor linked bonus, which may or may not be useful for you, and lastly, the blessing. For the linked bonus on the snake god, you get 30% AFK gain rate. This is a very useful bonus, and I recommend using this on most characters until you unlock better gods. AFK gains apply to anything from the skills that you're using to when you're fighting for more kill count per hour to uh, getting more ladles from cooking. And the most important situation that you want to use this god on is collecting samples for your 3D printer, as this will definitely increase your sample size by a significant amount. For the minor linked bonus on this character, it's just accuracy and defense. And by this point, it should be kind of the least of your concerns. At, at, by the time you're in world five. However, it can be a useful benefit if you have nothing else that you wanna use for that character. For the blessing, you get more divinity gain per level. Uh, I believe it's 2% divinity per level and it does cost gaming pixels. And as you see, this cost does scale quite high, but decently into gaming, you should be able to max this out for a total of 200% more divinity gain on from this one God. And that bonus is applied at all times. The second god you can unlock is Arctus, which provides the unique benefit of having that character always linked to the lab. And this allows you to pull those characters out to progress through World 5 or do your other skills or, and allow you to maintain your lab bonuses at the same time. One other huge benefit from Arctis is the minor link bonus, which gives you more talents for all of your talents that you have at least one point in. This works very similar to symbols of beyond from the elite classes and will basically allow you to have more points, which gives you more skill efficiency, more damage, and all the other various benefits that you gain from it. So this can be hugely useful even on more characters than the six that's recommended to always have in the lab. But this is a pretty late game talent if you're using it on more than six characters, and there may be better options for you. Lastly, for the Blessing on Arctis, it's another Divinity gain, and this is leveled up using Gold Bars from Sailing, and it is fairly easy to get enough Gold Bars to get this to a fairly high level, which means overall you're gaining more from Divinity by leveling up this god. My recommendation again is to have at least six characters with this at all times, unless you want to throw a character back in the lab for more printer sampling as an example. And there's a few more benefits with that that we'll talk about uh, on later gods. Next up we have Nubisect, and this gives us a link bonus of giving two times more kills per hour while you're opening portals or leveling up your death note. Um, this is really only useful during the initial world push as you're trying to get through the uh, different maps or if you're trying to get those extra multi-kill bonuses from your death note. You also have the minor linked bonus of more total damage. Keep in mind that your minor link bonuses are based on your divinity levels, so you may not get anywhere close to this amount of total damage, or you may get much more depending on how high your divinity is. One thing to mention here is that while it does say total damage, you have a lot of sources of total damage, so you're not going to gain quite as much as you think based on the 110% value that I have. It's overall going to be a pretty small gain, and it should not be the main reason that you're using Nubisect. You also have the blessing from this, which gives you scaled skill efficiency. This is a additive bonus to your base skill efficiency, and it does increase the amount of skill efficiency you have based on how much base skill efficiency. So it's kind of a multiplier and kind of an additive bonus. It's kind of confusing. Uh, I do think it's worth leveling up as it is just another way to make your skills more efficient. This also uses gaming pixels and it does scale quite high. So this may be something that you're leveling for a long time to come. 
For the fourth god, we have Harip, and this is one of the best gods that you can unlock, and I recommend getting to it as soon as possible. However, there's a few caveats to it. But the main bonus you get is three times more resources from your 3D printer for any character that's linked with this god. Now this is multiplicative with the lab bonus that doubles the amount that you get. So if you have this god on and you throw that character back in the lab with a good sample, you can be producing six times more resources from that character while he's in the lab. The other thing to mention is the minor link bonus is one of the best gains that you can get for coins. So any character that you can link with this is going to gain a lot more coins as there's no other bonus that gives you quite as much as you get from Harip. And lastly, for the blessing, another great bonus, which gives us more divinity. And this is spent, this is upgraded using coins, which can be one of the easiest things to upgrade, especially if you're using the minor blink bonus to gain more coins, which means you can spend more on upgrading your blessing here, which means more divinity and unlocking the new gods faster. Next up is the goat god, and this gives us the bonus of being in the lab also counts as being connected to the divinity altar. So you'll be able to level up both of these skills at the same time. However, I can't really see a situation that that's useful unless some of your characters still need a few more lab levels to unlock more chip slots. Other than that, I really don't recommend you using this. The only time that I would recommend using this god as a link is if you're trying to get a very high sample on one particular character, and the situation then would be that you link one god to the snake, which gives you the 30% AFK gains, and then the other nine characters with the minor link bonus, so you can potentially gain another 27% or 25% more AFK gains on that one particular character. That's the only time that I could see this being useful, but keep in mind that you can only change your links on your characters once per week. So you really need to time it to be able to change your link back um, at the weekly reset. So changing it right before the reset, doing your sample, and then after reset, changing back to the gods that you actually wanna use for your characters. One other positive from this is that the blessing does give us more sailing speed and this is one of the best things you can do is spend your gaming pixels on leveling up for more sailing speed as it's very necessary to get to higher end sailing. Next up we have the elephant god and I'll be honest here I can't see a situation where I would use this god on any character as you simply have too much RNG here to actually gain anything useful. But basically when you log in a character, you have a chance that any AFK time that you collected will also progress other things such as the refinery, 3D printer, and so on and so forth. Now, the problem is, is you only gain progress in one of these options, but only two of them are actually useful. So it's a lot of RNG chance for very little gains. Now, extra time in your refinery or your 3D printer can be great, but the other options are just plain bad as you have too many options to help you with sailing or gaming already and the gains that you'll get from cooking or pet breeding is just not really useful so all in all this character can is only really useful because of the blessing that it has to give you more divinity gains the minor link bonus from this god is to get more class exp uh, this is additive, and there are so many options for leveling up your class at this point that it's basically pointless to link a character just for the class EXP. And the blessing we can level up using the Atom Particles, which gives us more Divinity Gain as well. So I do recommend leveling up the Divinity Gain, but this will require good sampling to get enough of the resources to continue gaining these Particles to level it up significantly. Next up is Permep, and this is the god that it starts getting very difficult to unlock. At this point, you're spending quite a bit of time getting enough divinity points unless you've leveled up enough to be able to unlock this god. But I do recommend getting it as soon as possible as the bonuses you get are basically irreplaceable. So the major link bonus is all characters produce two times more divinity and two times more divinity EXP, and you only need one character linked to this. I recommend you always have one character linked to this. I don't see a situation where you don't want this linked unless you're doing something very specific for a few minutes and then you're switching back. This gives you more divinity, more EXP. Um, this means you unlock your gods much faster. Lastly, you get the minor link bonus, which gives you more sailing speed. Sailing speed is so important that 
you definitely need to have this linked until you're basically done with World 5 and you don't need any of these benefits anymore. Uh, the plant grow speed is okay, but it's just another bonus that you get, so we'll just accept it and move on. And lastly, for the blessing, this also gives us more sailing speed, and we upgrade this using coins. And it does get relatively expensive at later levels. Uh, as you can see, I'm already using six of the green coins for one more level, but this is another way to just increase how much you're gaining overall in World 5. And lastly, we have Flutterbus here, and this is the last god that actually has active bonuses right now. So this is the point that you want to get to in Divinity. There are two more gods that we can unlock, and there is a benefit for unlocking those last two gods, but we'll talk about that when we talk about the Elemental Sorceress class near the end of the guide. And the link bonus of whenever you level up a skill over level 50, you can have a chance of getting a Divinity Pearl, which gives you more EXP to skills under 50. Now, the only time that I find this link bonus useful is if you need to level up a new character's skills or if you're underleveled on your maestro, for example, and you want to take, take advantage of these divinity pearls to boost your maestro's skilling levels up, which means you can get more damage from him and so on and so forth. For the minor link bonus, we do get more skill EXP. This also can be very useful for the maestro leveling it up as his overall leveling power for his skills is kind of weak. Um, and the other time I could see this being useful is if you're trying to level up skills to try to um, unlock access to use a higher level tool such as a new pickaxe for mining. For the blessing, you do get more total damage from this, 1% per level. It does require a significant amount of these uh, atom particles to be able to level up. So again, you'll need good sampling to be able to make use of Flutterbus's blessing. So now let's talk about ways to increase your divinity gains moving through the worlds. Starting in world one, you have stamps and you have the divine stamp, which gives you more divinity EXP gain. Keep in mind that these bonuses are doubled by the laboratory, so you do gain a significant bonus by having your laboratory active. You also have the statue at the very bottom of the statue list. You have the spiral statue, which gives more divinity EXP as well. Both of these are great bonuses to level up your divinity a little quicker, but make sure you're grabbing a hold of the spiral statue and the golden statue to make it active on all of your characters. Moving on to World 2, starting with Alchemy, there's two bubbles that affect divinity, starting with Pious at Heart, which gives you more divinity EXP gain. It's a decent rate here, and it's fairly cheap to level up, so I recommend grabbing this as soon as possible. After that, you have Gifts Abound, and this gives you a chance to not spend your Divinity Points when you're offering the gift, which means you can roll those chances more frequently and unlock gods a little bit faster. This is only really useful early game, as eventually you'll unlock all the gods, and this bubble won't be very useful, so I don't recommend too heavily investing in this bubble. Also in the Vials tab, you do have the Maple Syrup Vial, which gives you more Divinity EXP as well. This bonus is doubled by the laboratory, but it is 2% divinity EXP per level at base. And so it's fairly easy to level this up as long as you have decent samples. Also in World 2, the post office does have a divinity box. This is unlocked by a sailing artifact, so you may not have access to it too early in the game. However, it does give more divinity EXP, more divinity gain, and a little bit of wisdom. Overall, this is a pretty good box if you're looking to level up your divinity a little quicker. Uh, however, it is a significant amount of boxes, 800 boxes to get 50% more divinity EXP. And honestly, I would prefer to put my boxes into sailing or gaming instead, as overall I'm going to gain more on my account than investing so many boxes unless I just have enough left over. As there's no bonuses we can pick up in World 3, moving on to World 4, we have two bonuses in the dinner menu from Cotton Candy, which gives you 2% Divinity EXP per plate level, and farther on down you have the Wrath Grapes, which gives you 4% Divinity EXP per plate level. Both of these are worth picking up as it will help you progress a little bit quicker. And moving on to World 5, we have several multipliers that can help our Divinity gains. Four of these are from the different God statues, as we've already looked at, and we have three artifacts in sailing that can give us bonuses. So let's take a look at that next. The first artifact that you can find that affects divinity is from Rocky Peaks. This is the Ashen Urn, which gives you more divinity gain per class level of your highest leveled character. 
If you have the ancient form bonus, that's up to 400. So it can give you basically four times more divinity gain if you have this artifact and have a decently leveled character. After that, your next artifact is found on Toxic Bay, and this is the Jade Rock, which gives you 3% more divinity for every 10 items after 500 found in the slab. My slab isn't really filled out that well, so I'm only gaining 180% divinity, but with the ancient form, that bonus is doubled, and I can see you getting four to five times more divinity simply for having the Jade Rock as well. The last artifact that's worth mentioning is the artifact you need to unlock the Divinity Post Office box, and that's the Bill Sai Tri, which will give you more uh, Divinity gains for having that Post Office box unlocked if you're going to spend the points into it. And for the last bonus that you can get for Divinity, it's from the new Elemental Sorcerer class. The talent Shared Beliefs gives you more Divinity EXP gain for all of your characters. I highly recommend having points into this, even if it's on a combat spec, as this will allow you to level up your divinity quicker, which means you get more bonuses, the minor link bonuses are leveled up, and overall you're going to gain more on all your characters by having the points into shared belief. There are two other talents that are affected by divinity, but they're not directly going to increase your divinity gains. That's the um, polytheism, which gives you the chance to unlock access to a second god link for this particular character and the way to do this is by leveling it up as you level it up you'll unlock a different god link so at level 13 here i have harit the second link but as i level it up it will cycle through the different gods now one thing to mention with the polytheism is you can de-level this talent without respecking, and that is by standing underneath the elephant here. And as I'm standing underneath it, you can see it will tick down on its own and allow you to reinvest your points slowly. One other thing to mention with this talent is it does give you a bonus to your divinity points for this character. So if you're actively training this character, it is recommended to have as many points into this, but this is only useful if you're actually training divinity on your elemental sorcerer at that time. The last talent that you can unlock is the God's Chosen Children, which gives you more damage for all characters, um, but you have to have all 10 of your gods and then you basically, as you put points in this, you'll gain more damage. As you can see though, currently I'm leveling this up and I'm not gaining any actual bonus for this because I don't have all 10 of my gods unlocked at this time. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button and drop a comment if you're enjoying our content. And a huge shout out to our patrons, your support means the world to us. If you would like to become a patron, check out the link in the description for more details. And be sure to visit our merch store so you can get some pretty cool stuff. And if you have any thoughts or questions, please let me know, and we'll see you next time.